Welcome to worship. Um, just a reminder, now that we are entering the month of February, our focus for the DPCO food pantry is canned tuna. Uh, so please pick some extra up when you're grocery shopping and drop that by church. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us, we exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We join in singing, Celebrate the Feast. pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists, and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords. Yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things, and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things, and through whom we exist. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from Psalm 111. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, O Lord, pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor marks your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works and given them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. One of the things that I have been doing a lot of during this pandemic is reading. And while some of it has been education-based, the majority has been for entertainment. I enjoy stories with twists I didn't see coming and appreciate authors with the gifts to draw me in from the opening paragraph setting expectations for what is to come, fully developing characters and making me eager to read on and hear more. The gospel writer Mark understood this. He knew the importance of setting expectations and drawing in the reader early with a dynamic, fast-moving storyline. And so he begins his gospel with Jesus' baptism and tells of the heavens being torn open and a voice announcing, This is my son. From the beginning of this gospel, Mark's storyline and purpose for writing are well-defined. The purpose of the stories he shares is to make clear that the main character, Jesus, is the Son of God. Mark wastes no time in telling us this as he quickly moves from God's voice at Jesus' baptism to displaying the power and authority of Jesus as he calls those first disciples who, without hesitation, drop what they are doing and follow. Today's story is still early in the first chapter of Mark's Gospel, and it picks up with Jesus and the new disciples in tow, heading into the temple at Capernaum. This moment in the temple will mark the beginning of Jesus' public ministry, and its dramatic action and dialogue hint at what is to come throughout the next three years of Jesus' life and ministry. So how does this ministry begin? Well, his first act of public ministry begins with confrontation. Theologian David Losey points out that whatever dramatic value beginning with a fight scene might initially promise, there was little doubt of who will win this showdown. 
The spirit protests Jesus' very presence, and Jesus casts him away with a command as authoritative as it is succinct. And because of Jesus' bold teaching and power over this spirit of oppression, his fame spreads quickly. What I am particularly drawn to in that observation is the statement regarding the healing that takes place. Losi calls it Jesus' power over the spirit of oppression. I like that understanding of the healing. I think it's a good clarifier of what occurred. Most of us have seen enough Hollywood productions of horror movies that when we hear about spirits convulsing and crying out, as we do in this scripture, we picture some awful exorcism scene with crosses falling off walls, deep, throaty voices crying out and head spinning. But to go there in our imagination is to risk missing the point of what happens. The point Mark's gospel is making is always first and foremost about who Jesus is. And who he is, is the Holy One of God, which is what the unclean spirits, whatever those may be, call Jesus. What I hope we see and hear in this healing is that when the beloved Son speaks, things happen. His word carries power and authority, and Jesus will use his power and authority to oppose any and all forces that keep a child of God from the abundant life that God has desires for all of us. And that's where I want our focus to land in this text, because it continues to be God's desire for us today. God wants the most for us from this life and stands in opposition to anything that robs us from the joy and community and purpose for which we were created. Jesus commands the unclean spirit to be silent and come out. The Greek command to be silent that's used here, literally translated, demands an action like putting on a muzzle. So the spirit, the thing that is limiting, controlling the life of this beloved child is muzzled silenced by Jesus, the Holy One of God, and then commanded to leave. It's a powerful scene, one that is life-changing for the man in the encounter, and one that can be life-changing for us as well. If we are honest with ourselves, we all have unclean spirits of one kind or another, keeping us from living the full, abundant life that God desires for us, Maybe it's an incident from our past that has marked us and keeps us from fully trusting or forgiving another person. Something embedded so deeply in how we see ourselves that we find everything within us pushing back, resisting Jesus' call to silence it and call it out. Whatever the unclean spirit limiting us, Jesus has come to say, be silent and come out. Be silent and come out, Jesus says, to all of them. Yes, all of them. What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? Us is how the unclean spirit responds. Us, plural. Plural because there are so many things in our lives that draw us away from God. So many things that keep us from living the abundant life God intended. And to all of them, Jesus commands, be silent and come out. Can you? Can you even for a moment imagine what such silencing, such freedom from all that has held you back, bound you up, sapped you of energy and hope, what that silencing might be like or feel like for your life How freeing would it be to allow God to silence the past hurts that keep us from trusting or forgiving? How hopeful might the day look if we allow Jesus to silence the fear and despair that casts such long shadows on our day? How much more abundant would life be if we allowed God to silence our desire for control, our longing for the approval of others, 
or the false narratives we have internalized that tell us our worth and our value lie in our jobs, our possessions, or our status. Oh, to welcome God to come silence and cast out all those competing unclean spirits that shout from within us. Voices seeking to drown out the one true voice. The voice of the Holy One of God. The voice of the one who calls you worthy and beloved. The voice of the one who gave his own life so that you might have abundant life now and eternal life forever. Come, Holy One of God, we pray. Silence and cast out all that draws us away from you. Make our hearts and our lives your home. Amen. United in Christ, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to share an offering in thanks and praise to God and in support of ministry as we sing, Son of God, Eternal Savior.
is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Come and be fed. I invite you to join in celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.